a very good morning to one and all present here uh, first of all i request all the non speakers to keep their mic mic on mute and let the speakers complete the session and you will have, we will have a separate question and answer round separately so i am abhishek sharma on behalf of choudhary charan singh national institute of agriculture marketing jaipur welcomes you all to the kisan mitra webinar series on agriculture technology for marketing organized by ccs national institute of agriculture marketing in partnership with principal scientific advisor government of india choudhary charan singh national institute of agriculture marketing jaipur is an autonomous organization established under ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare government of india to cater various agriculture related aspects such as training research consultancy education in agriculture marketing ccs niam is also recognized globally as a center of excellence in southeast asia kisan mit friends of farmers is an initiative by principal scientific advisor office in partnership with choudhary charan singh national institute of agriculture marketing jo objective of the initiative is to is, is the objective of the initiative is to bring technologies to for farmers and reverse migrants who have moved rural due to covid-19 under this initiative more than 1000 technologies have been identified which are supported by icr institutions nabard ministry of rural development isro and gates foundation on the supply side of this technology there are innovators entrepreneurs researchers in academic and research institutions talking about their technology and the webinar participants being on the demand side who are typically agri business companies agri business enthusiasts government functionaries government functionaries agri business companies and other agri business stakeholders who are keen in agri technologies moving further i would i would like to introduce today's speaker mr m ramakrishnan from intello labs private limited gurugram haryana ramakrishnan is an entrepreneur and experienced business leader He is currently vice president in sales and marketing at Intello Labs, a firm that digitizes food quality assessment using artificial intelligence and computer vision. He regularly conducts conducts guest lectures on AI and analytics. He is an angel investor. He advises startups on strategy and fundraising. In his previous assignments, he has incubated, scaled, and managed large teams in analytics businesses. He has worked worked with large MNCs such as Accenture as well as SMEs, E-Value Serve, etc. He did his MBA from MDI Gurgaon and graduated in mechanical engineering from DCE. In his spare time, he reads. He uh, likes to read and blog. Now I would like to invite uh, Rama Krishnan to take a session on mobile app for checking the quality of fruits and vegetables. Over to you, Rama Krishnan. Thanks, Lord Abhishek. Um, thanks for the opportunity. Um, hello, everyone. I'm glad to be representing Intel Labs in this forum. I'm going to walk you through a presentation. Can you see my screen? Yes, it is visible. Just enlarge it. Is it visible? All right. Great. Thank you. Um, So let me start with the problem we are trying to solve. So if you look at the average farmer, uh, even in the pre-COVID area, uh, the one big ch- challenge he would have is he would not be clear whether he is getting a fair price for his uh, produce. And if you look at the overall food and agri supply chain, there is a lack of transparency across the chain. There is no trust uh, between one player and another. The farmer believes that the trader is not paying a fair price. the trader believes that the farmer is not representing his quality uh, in a fair and transparent manner the end buyer feels that the trader is is uh, you know mystifying the actual quality and is uh, uh, you know overcharging for the commodity and so on and so forth and that's uh, that's the issue across the board uh, even globally we have seen that these challenges exist and that's what we are trying to address now where do all these problems originate from the challenges originate from the fact that the current quality systems are essentially broken um, they are not reliable they are subjective uh, it depends on the nuances of unskilled labor who are you know uh, very very fickle there is no auditability you know let's say 3 days back you cleared a, a stock of tomatoes it goes to the food processor and then he comes back and says that lot was bad 
you have no idea of determining what happened three days back. You know, with perishable uh, food items especially, you just cannot determine what happened earlier. And the overall cost, not just talking about the cost of the labor who are doing the quality check, if you look at the cost of, you know, lost opportunities, if you look at the cost of loss and dump and food waste and so on and so forth, then overall it becomes extremely expensive. Now, when we start implementing our solution, uh, for instance, one of the largest food retailers in India, they said that, look, we knew that there were defects passing through our uh, quality uh, our checks. It was going through our supply chain, but we didn't have data. Now that you are giving us very clear data as to, you know, what is the quality at each stage, it's a lot more uh, easy for us to take action. That's that's what we're trying to do. So what's the utopia? What's, uh, what's the solution for all these problems? We have a mobile app. We call it Intello Track. Um, all we uh, have to do is click an image of the produce which you're trying to buy or trying to sell. Uh, the software uh, analyzes the image and for each item in the image, it says, this is a good quality item, this is a bad quality item, these are the defects, and it gives a bottom-up quantitative mathematical score for your quality. Um, the product is already in the market. It is being used by some of the largest companies, both in India and abroad. It's a SaaS model. Uh, it's a license fee-based model. Uh, with reference to FPOs, uh, we haven't directly deployed with farmers or FPOs yet. There are some conversations going on. In fact, what we're trying to do is um, distribute a basic vanilla version free for FPOs, at least for the next few weeks, maybe for a few months. You can uh, you can contact us. We'll help you install the app. You can use it. You can see the experience. And, you know, we'd love to kind of hear your, hear, hear your feedback. So, so. so how does it really work? As I said, uh, you know, you click an image. Um, in the app itself, you start understanding, you know, how many cracked items are there, how many shriveled items are there, uh, what is the color of the items I'm seeing, is there any item which is below my size specifications, above my size specifications. So any kind of physical imperfections, any color-related issues, any size-related issues are highlighted in the quality score. And that's not all. Over a period, you can start uh, analyzing trends in a very powerful way. Um, which farmer has what consistent quality, which location has more issues, um, which warehouse is able to control its quality better, which commodity is about to you know, end its season and hence you see a declining trend in its quality day on day or week on day. And those trends become very uh, useful for management decisions. Uh, just a little more detail about how our algorithm works. So the first thing it does is it draws contours. If you look at the image in the laptop, you know, each item is identified as, hey, this is a discrete item. And then it looks as uh, the physical imperfections or the defects in each item. Uh, so it will identify that this is a crack or this is a shriveled item or this is a spot. And then we get into the severity. We can say that, uh, look, beyond a certain uh, size uh, of the damage, is when I start looking at, uh, or when I start classifying it as a defect. Otherwise, uh, it's not a defect. Mm -hmm. So if it's smaller than a threshold size, we can class mm -hmm. reclassify it as normal, and only above a certain size we can classify it as a defect. Um, I'll run a small demo video. I hope it works properly. This is the app interface. You just have to log in. This is the app source page, which also displays the results of what we did in this capture. Next. Ram your, Ram, your video is not visible. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, let me just go back to the screen. All right, so um, uh, forget the video. Um, I'll just move on. This is a sample output, and I want to talk through uh, the specific example. So if you, if you can see, this is a, uh, a quality report of an orange um, with details of 
uh, different kinds of defects, rotten, bruised, mechanical damage, without stock, pressure damage, so on and so forth. Uh, so the uh, the case study is with reference to a farmer who was trying to sell his produce uh, in a cold storage in MP. So what a lot of farmers do is they click images and they send uh, those images on WhatsApp to potential buyers that, hey, I have the stock you want to buy. So what this farmer did was instead of sending just the image, he took our quality app, he took the report which was coming from the quality app, and that's what he circulated. He said that, look, this is a... Uh, certificate coming from a third party agency this gives you a good idea of you know the quality i have i have about one and a half tons of the stock you want to buy and in the actual scenario his quality score was actually just about 80 percent in fact it was 79 point something and we were worried that you know with so much of defective items will he be able to sell but what happened was there was a buyer who actually liked the fact that the farmer was being transparent about his level of defects. And as everyone knows, irrespective of the grade of produce you have, there is a buyer out there. He has a certain price in mind. And in this case, the buyer came and, and, and discussed with the seller uh, and they agreed on a trade and it got executed. Uh, it was very uh, heartening to see that, you know, bringing more transparency into the supply chain actually helped uh, close the deal it helped kind of build a new relation uh, in the market so to say this can be applied across the supply chain so we've worked with uh, food retail companies and food distribution companies and and install the application at farm gate or a collection center so we've had use cases where uh, the field staff goes to the farm gate and you know uh, they click images they share reports with the hq HQ decides yes, buy, don't buy, or at the collection center anyway. When the farmer brings the produce, then you know the the local quality staff they use the app to verify whether they're doing the right thing. It can definitely be used at the distribution center where you receive materials from multiple locations before it goes to the customer. It can be used at the retail store level, uh, and uh, both at inbound and outbound people use this. At the inbound, the decision is around should I accept it. Do I need to discount it? At the dispatch, it's more of, hey, have I done a good job of a manual sorting grading? Is this good enough to send to my customer? Can I proactively share it with my customer and, and build confidence? At the store level, it's more about, you know, am I, am I making sure that the display quality is good? Am I trying to reduce the, uh, the dump or uh, the unsold inventory? Is there something which I can restock the next day? Those kind of different applications exist. It's uh, very simple to set up. Uh, you have standard definitions, uh, basis what the entire trade uses. Uh, the user uh, IDs are all that need to be set up. Uh, if you have multiple locations, then we quickly integrate uh, what kind of drop downs you need in terms of that. Uh, the camera setting, etc. It, it really doesn't matter which phone you use as long as it's more than a 12 megapixel camera. Uh, and then, you know, it's it's practically deployed immediately. We just give the app, people start using it. We just do a five minute training session and that's it, uh, we start collecting data. Uh, just a case study of how we impacted working of one large food retailer. Uh, so they were uh, buying uh, in the typical way of from the uh, procurement uh, cycle from farmers at the collection center. They had uh, some losses because they were not being very scientific about the procurement. Uh, they didn't have very robust systems for uh, accepting, rejecting, discounting produce right at the entry point. So after using our application, we realized that uh, about 10 to 12% of their wrong purchases were, were cut down. Um, we are helping them traceability of the quality that, you know, this came from this particular location. This was the quality of this crate on, on that particular date. And, this was the quality at the, uh, the DC. This is the quality at the point of uh, the retail. Uh, and uh, we helped them actually uh, salvage their dump. We realized about one third of what they were using uh, of their going out on a daily basis could actually be restocked and sold the next day. Uh, so that, that was a great experience. Uh, apart from, you know, the physical retailer, we've also worked with e-com retailers where we have uh, reduced the customer concessions or, uh, you know, discounts and rebates to customers by about half. 
Uh, and we have seen customer satisfaction score go up by about 15% or 150 basis points. Uh, this is the team. Uh, we have got four founders, three of us from IID Bombay. Uh, Dave, the fourth person, is currently in the US. He's building the North America team. We have a strong expanded leadership team. Our head of products is an IM Bangalore alumnus. Um, half of our uh, tech team is, is from IID Bombay. Uh, I am an MBA. We're well funded. Uh, we raised uh, money from Sama Capital, Nexus, and Omnivore. Uh, we raised Series A about $6 million about two months back. So currently, we're not uh, raising any money. Uh, we're associated with very strong accelerator programs around the world, grow in Singapore, uh, thrive in the US. Uh, we're doing good work with uh, Google, AWS, and Microsoft in India. We're part of NASCOM Deep Tech Club. Some sample output in terms of the dashboards. So this is an example of you know how you can use the quality grading to figure out uh, what grade to send where. So if you are at the uh, the collection point, uh, you're getting a mix of grade A and grade B items. Um, you can clearly separate the two and say that hey, I'll send the grade A to retail uh, and the grade B to Hareka uh, because that's acceptable, so to say. Um, you can look at how the quality is uh, varying across different dates uh, at the time of dispatch uh, to the time of receipt. And uh, you can also trace the quality and the issues uh, if there is an issue of uh, a lot of problems uh, which is being found by the customer, for instance, in Supporta, if it's, it's getting soft by the time it reaches. You can trace it back to say, hey, there is a transportation issue and to solve that, maybe better packaging will, will resolve the issue. Each defect can be traced back to whether it's a transportation issue or a farm level issue. Uh, if you find that certain customers are uh, uh, irrational, they are uh, uh, rejecting materials, even though you're confident about their quality, you can and look at the brands which says that, hey, my dispatch quality is pretty much the same across customers, but there is one customer who is rejecting more. And I can choose to not work with the customer or at least share the data with the customer that, hey, this is the quality I send, but you're still rejecting. Let's discuss. Uh, one of the important uh, uses of a product is you can trace the quality across the supply chain. So, you know, from CC to DC to uh, the store, you know, how does the quality really come down? Um, you know, how much of a drip uh, in the quality are you seeing? What kind of defects are you seeing? And hence you start taking decisions. You know, for instance, in app, uh, in tomatoes, one common problem which happens is people buy ripe tomatoes. It's not really a defect, but if you're buying ripe tomatoes or overripe tomatoes right at the farm level, by the time it hits the stores, it's completely deteriorated. So you have to buy under ripe right at the beginning. So those kind of decisions and checkpoints can be brought about at different points in the supply chain. Uh, if you're working in different locations, then you can analyze, you know, how is the quality in one point versus the other. Uh, you can look at uh, how different commodities are performing. There's always this excuse that ye commodity ka abhi, uh, naam, ye, uh, time theek nahi hai, ya iska mali kharab hai. But you can, you know, if the, the product is too bad in the market, you have to take a decision whether it even makes sense to procure it or, or stop it because the season is out. Uh, you can check your quality against the Mundi quality and, and figure out whether you have the right uh, controls or not. That's pretty much it. My contact details are mentioned here. Please feel free to reach out to me for any questions. And as I said, we are trying to um, give FPOs a free version for a limited usage, and uh, we'll be happy to um, help you and, and discuss any further comments. So I request to all the participants to unmute and raise their questions one by one, or you can also write the questions on the chat box, and I will raise the question with the Ram. Just unmute and raise your questions.
so ram uh, the first question is what is the price of that app like how much it cost it depends on the uh, the the number of licenses the number of images you are taking uh, but for one commodity it will be like a few thousand rupees per month that's the license fee model uh, for fpos uh, it will be slightly different like it's a, it's it's based on the commodity like once i am uh, using it that commodity for it like say suppose for a tomato then it say and at the same time i'm using it for another commodity so it's a commodity specific price right right so if you use it for uh, 10 commodities then whatever is the fee for one commodity multiplied by 10 is what you'll have to pay okay so uh, one question the cost of an app it's uh, raise your questions you can unmute and raise your questions directly <clears throat> Jyoti has raised a hand. Okay. This app Jyoti, can you can unmute. Mode. Jyoti, you can unmute and raise your question. Jyoti. Oh, I. So uh, it works for twenty, thirty, forty-five different. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, sir. Actually, yeah, so Ram, uh, myself, Pradeep, uh, call, calling from uh, from uh, Farmers Persona startup based on Kerala. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, what we do uh, uh, is that we are connecting the farmers with the consumer, and uh, he doing uh, maybe uh, around fifty five uh, different variety of uh, vegetables and thirteen varieties of fruits. Okay. So and uh, for each items, uh, its contribution level is nearly two to two point five percentage towards our uh, total uh, contribution, total okay. uh, revenue contribution. So it's uh, not uh, focusing on one or two items. So for uh, such a startup, uh, so its quality, I would say that for the bitter gut, its quality in the uh, uh, in the what we can say January to April, its quality we will get the good quality one. And after that, its quality we can't be expect the same quality as January to April during the time of uh, May to uh, July or right. May to August because of the rain and other thing. Right. So how that uh, problems will be uh, uh, addressing over here, and uh, what should be uh, the plan for us like a startup doing in the B two C space? Your question is, what should you do April to June when uh, you know you don't get the right quality? Yeah, exactly. But right. So the uh, it's a it's a business call. Uh, as long as you take the call with data. So uh, I'll give you a parallel example. Uh, the food retail uh, example, which I was mentioning. So the the team knew that the papaya coming into the market was bad, uh, and mm -hmm. they had kind of given an informal approval to the team. Yes, we know the quality is not good, but buy whatever is available. Now, what was practically mm -hmm. happening was at the farm gate level itself, one third of what they were buying was was defective. By the time it reached from the farm gate to the store, 50 to 70 percent defects were there. And if you looked at the dump unsold inventory, it was like, you know, almost uh, I mean, papaya contribution to the dump was the highest. Now. Mm -hmm. Practically speaking, there was zero value. In fact, there was value destruction by bringing in papaya into the supply chain and then eventually you're not able to sell it. Mm -hmm. Then the team said that, you know what? We had said, uh, we know that the, the material is bad right now, but buy whatever is available. But did, had we known that we are mm -hmm. buying 30% defective items right at the farm gate, we would have said no. We would have said we would rather not stock it and then you know throw it all out rather than you know bring it all into the supply chain. So in your case, in April to June, you need to take an assessment of how bad the quality is, whether the customer is going to accept it or he's going to you know raise a complaint and you know create more problems for you. Will you destroy mm -hmm. your brand value by providing bad quality items, or will you actually delight the customer that even though in general the stock is not available, but you are able to provide them something? Is it that important to them? Uh, I mean, uh, you you need to take that call, but you take the call with concrete data. If you feel that yes, in normal times I get zero percent defects, and in these times I get five percent defects, and you know 
uh, that's something I can live with or, you know, the, the amount of dump really doesn't increase much and the economic value I make out, it's, it's a profitable game for me. Then you go ahead and do it. Uh, okay, okay. Please do check the quality and, you know, be data driven in your uh, assessment. Okay, so uh, my question is, Ram, uh, this uh, training module of uh, this individual items quality is that is doing by the company and uh, the company can be able to change that in between? Uh, that, that the learning yeah. of, uh, it's maybe a system or a M. Right, so what we tell people is, uh, we will give the, the quality assessment in a bottom-up way. What I mean by that is, we will tell you that, you know, let's say spots is 5% or rotten is 10% or, you know, black spots is 12%. You can decide whether 10% defect is acceptable or 5% is acceptable or, you know, this particular defect I will ignore in a particular time. We will anyway have the data which will give you full clarity. You can pick and choose, you know, what you want to decide on and what you want to see and what you don't want to see. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Got it. Great. So that uh, demo link I can be able to use and uh, make it live, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. So Ram, coming back to my previous question, like, uh, like say, suppose if a farmer wants to use this uh, commodity, a farmer wants to use this, your app, uh, mobile app, your uh, right. Intello track app uh, for, uh, for quality assessment. So of tomato, say suppose. So uh, how much he want, how much is he supposed to pay on monthly basis? As you said, it is in a subscription based model. So, right. so for the farmers, we are still not clear exactly what will be the long term price. As I said, right now we are giving it for free, at least for uh, so and specifically for tomato, we are giving it for free uh, to see how the usage is. And basically, our interest is in the larger game that with the revised. Uh, you know, guidelines and the new ordinance which has come out, we want to encourage more and more digital trade. And more digital trade will only happen when people trust the quality. And people will trust the quality when the seller is able to share a quality certificate with going to a lab. So if a farmer uses our app, clicks the image, uploads our quality report in a digital platform, either like an Enam or an Agri 10X or one of the many other, you know, digital platforms which are in this space, then people will start using it and the adoption will increase. So uh, that's that's what we're looking at. Uh, but if there is a very specific individual with a very specific commodity, you know, you can reach out to me, we can discuss what commercials make sense. So, so, so say suppose like if any farm wants to use the, your uh, uh, mobile app, so he can directly go to the Play Store and just so write... It's available on Play Store, they should contact me, I'll be able to uh, give it Okay, to you them. are able to provide the uh, uh, like that app information yes so it so right now you are uh, providing this only to farmers free of cost or to others also for their uh, we are giving it for to farmers and fpos for free of cost okay uh, for institutions we are starting straight away with the commercial one okay 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 so like how much how much time you have spent uh, like how much time you already sold some this kind of technologies to what is the encouragement how people are responding and how many institutions have you already approached and they have taken your services in how many commodities? Right. So we've been working on this for about three years now. Uh, we started with Reliance and expanded to many other companies. So right now we work with uh, close to 15 different clients uh, uh, in India and a few others globally. Uh, we work with about 45 different fruits and vegetables. Uh, and the response has been phenomenal and most of the clients have increased the usage either in terms of the number of locations they use or in terms of number of commodities they've used. Uh, in the last one month, I have closed uh, two to three new accounts and uh, in discussions with at least 10 new opportunities. So interest is very big in the market, especially with Corona. Uh, there is a significant interest to uh, not have physical movement of people and you know physical checks and use digital met uh, methodologies uh, so definitely the interest is going up okay so uh, like one more question like how you make it affordable for a uh, customer just as a one of as as i as i, I am a customer i am, i go to the market to buy the vegetables and and just i want to make sure that 
how the quality of my product is good or not or whether it is chemical free or not or like what is the quality so can i pay something very less or affordable and it will give a value for me uh, for my uh, household as well right uh, interesting um so uh, because of various reasons we have cautiously stayed away from the end consumer we are keeping it a strictly b2b kind of a uh, because the end consumer value is is very different and it is as a startup is very difficult for us to reach like mass scale we would rather reach to focus number of businesses who will see value uh, in you know improving their customer satisfaction and cutting down their losses so end consumers we don't see using it for the next few years okay so uh, yes uh, yes sir you can raise your question go ahead with your question hello sir i am jyoti pratap sir hello hello sir are you hearing sir yes sir you are audible please raise your question sir i would like to ask you mr ram what is that uh, if i will take multi purpose suppose i am uh, working on different different types of uh, vegetables and fruit and what will be its cost and will will it be workable and also for the export for so that i need to make a my pack house so will be implemented in my pack house right so uh, let's discuss pricing offline roughly it is a few thousand rupees per month per commodity per license kind of a thing but reach out to me separately i will be happy to discuss the details uh, it can be used at a pack house uh it can be used at your point of exports it can be used at uh, point of uh, purchase it's a mobile application it can be used in any place hey uh, good morning this is saronan uh yeah are you can you hear me yes please yeah uh, actually uh, we have a group of farmers in our uh, area i'm from tamil nadu okay uh, okay uh, suppose if i am purchasing i'm actually i'm coordinating all the farmers with all the farmers in our area and uh, now i'm planning to you know purchase your software and uh, you know how about this one suppose if i if i am purchasing should i pay uh, the uh, each farmers uh, as a individual user or one user for me suppose as a group of farmers uh, we don't have actually we registered as a uh, you know society under society act uh, but not a farmer producer company you got my point what i'm saying it's I'm like sure. you know in tamil it tamil it is it, they will call it as a sangam it's a association sir na tamil kada sangam na nadu nenak theriyum okay great adha enoda question adha dhan sir ipo engalukku single license kudupingala illa naanga multiple license purchase pannanuma suppose if i want to ungalku single license la we can provide ninga enak email pannunga we can discuss separate Okay sir thank you thank you very much any other question question from audiences uh, so one question can like percent percentage accuracy of the app is it used uh, it uses only pictures what about texture of the produce right so uh, it does have a limitation that only what you can see is captured uh, so whatever man i can see we are able to replicate uh, in terms of accuracy what we have demonstrated with every client situation is when the rahul please unmute please mute all right so uh, what we have demonstrated in every client situation is uh, you know with the manual labor doing the grading your uh, quality accuracy is anywhere from 60 to 70% uh, whereas our app is 
usually 90-95%, many times even goes up to 99% accuracy. Um, so that's on the accuracy. I think the next question is an offline mode. Offline, uh, we have done some experiments, uh, but currently it works primarily in the online mode. You need connectivity. What you can do is you can click images and then upload it uh, wherever you have access to Wi-Fi or something. But uh, from a edge computing or on your mobile, it doesn't work that way. Right? App is customized or any update to be made to the app. Uh, typically, we've not need, uh, seen any needs for uh, customizing the app. The quality issues which we see are the same across different scenarios. The customization typically happens when, a, like someone said that, look, I have a group of farmers. It's like an FPO, but not registered as an FPO. And I need each person to have a different ID, which I can plus, uh, identify. Or if I'm using the same app at multiple locations, I need a, a very clear demarcation that this is the farm gate, this is the collection center, this is the distribution center. Those kind of customizations happen. Otherwise it doesn't happen. Minimum bandwidth, you need basically a, a, a decent uh, 4G connection. Um, does your app detect pesticide levels and nutrient levels? No, it doesn't detect uh, pesticide or nutrient levels. It's only visual defense. Uh, is it applicable for all fruits and vegetables? We're working with about 45 different SKUs now. Uh, we can add more as we go along. So one more question, Ram, like uh, how much megapixel camera is required? Is there any specific 12. requirement of the camera? 12. 12, 12. megapixels. Okay. Okay. And uh, like one more question, like uh, uh, as you said that we have, you have to just put your phone on the, and just take the image of those tomatoes or whatever the vegetables. Right. So how you get the 360 degree angle of that particular commodity? Like uh, if I'm not able to uh, uh, get the, a photo or images of that for the whole tomato and right. how your what is the accuracy of that in that terms right so uh it it doesn't cover 360 degree so there are two ways to address it one way to address it is you increase the sample size so if you don't want to disrupt the supply chain but you still want to increase the the quantum of checking then you keep clicking multiple crates so maybe the whole truck or maybe 20 different crates uh, and if you don't trust the person who's bringing the crates, then you empty the crates onto a sorting table and you spread it out on the ground so that at least the bottom layer, which is what most people are worried about that, you know, on the top layer, it looks good, but on the bottom mm -hmm. uh, layer, you know, it's bad items. So you will still see the top layer only in terms of uh, the, the tomato's top layer is only visible, but you're spreading it on the floor. So that way you kind of minimize the chances of it. Okay. Thank you. And uh, yes, one more question came. Is it only uh, a... currently we are only focusing on post harvest? Uh, we're not doing pre harvest. Uh, you can unmute uh, yourself and raise the question. It's the right time to get directly connected to the technological provider, the technology provider. So you can unmute and raise your question. Hello. Yes. Yeah. No. Is that yes? One more question, games. So, uh, in Rota's district of Bihar, one FPO is established in financial year 2021, and FPO works on tomato processing. How can I link FPO for marketing? So I think uh, <laughs> this is not the right platform to ask this question. Uh, this is basically uh, we are working for the the platform where you can uh, we can find the quality process quality uh, of those tomatoes. So not I think not valid question for now. Uh, 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कुड यू प्लीज प्रोवाइड द लिस्ट ऑफ ट्वेंटी फोर्टी फाइव फ्रूट एंड वेजिटेबल्स यस जस्ट मेल मे आई शेयर द लिस्ट ओके सो यू कैन मेल दिस टू राम राम हैज ऑलरेडी प्रोवाइडेड हिज ई मेल इट्स राम एट द रेट इंटेलो लैब्स डॉट कॉम सो यू कैन डायरेक्टली ई मेल टू हिम एंड यू कैन फाइंड द क्वेश्चन आंसर्स टू दोज क्वेश्चन तो एनी अदर क्वेश्चन you can either write on the chat box or you can uh, raise your questions unmute and raise your voice yes doctor doctor kor Dr. J S Samra, yes, you can unmute and raise your question, sir. How is the interface of the? So next question from Navneet. How is the interface of the app? Is it yeah, easy to use? It's easy to use. I'm sorry, I couldn't show you the video properly. It's uh, intuitive. Uh, it is in English, but it's fairly easy to use. We have seen uh, village level entrepreneurs really is using it in in uh, different areas. We've seen ground level staff who are not really you know educated or qualified. Uh, they have used it, so it's not a big challenge. So, uh, Ram, uh, have you shared the uh, your YouTube? I did. You Let have, me just. You have, you have, yeah, can you please share it again? Yes. So you can sh- you can uh, find the video on this link. Yeah. This, you can uh, all the I even request all the participants to copy this link, and you can get the get the video. Uh, Uh, find the video on this link how to use this app so uh, in next two minutes if you have any questions you can uh, ask or we will close the session is there additional charges like annual maintenance etc to use the app uh there is just a license fee that's it okay so it's a like a monthly license fee you have to pay and like there is no other uh no other uh, cost associated using with this app and that uh, cost will also depends upon how much how many commodities you are using uh for particular commodity it's a different cost and for other commodities it's a different cost so uh, ram like how if if i as a as a as a i am a farmer and i am using your app and i because it's a specific mobile uh, it's like once it is downloaded in the mobile on that mobile only it works i think so right. uh, if i use the same uh, mo- my mobile and i will use this this mobile for others also like share my mobile so how you uh, get rid of that kind of situation because uh, like it can be it can be used by others as well with the same cost like just it's come to my mind that's why i asked raise your question yeah so uh, uh, who install there is usually a cost associated with that particular id so if you and it the cost is linked to the usage so okay. uh, we'll say that up to this number of images you know this is the fee and beyond that you know this is the fee per image uh, okay that's so right so yes, a lot yes. of operates what it uh, what happens is okay there are some users who are in my office uh, so they will use it and then some people are traveling uh, and their usage is is varied so we'll give them multiple ids or they can use the same id across multiple people but we say that look we will track the total images uh been taken by these people and depending on the usage then you know you will be paid so that's how it is it means at the end like it's all or uh, used like if how many clicks you make and it will be charged accordingly correct, correct. and one more question uh, which comes to my mind is what is your like how much time it will take to uh, get the reports like once i click and right. uh, it will be going to the cloud so how much time it will take yeah it takes 3 to 5 minutes 
depending and i'm taking into account you know the the field level usage and low bandwidth and so on and so forth in uh, good wi-fi kind of areas uh, it will take one or two minutes to get the report so one or two minutes you can get the report instantly so it's right. uh, fairly uh, very less time so one question comes is is the user based costing or or package for group so i already addressed that so if, yes. if it's a group of users then it's a group based costing is just that uh, we will uh, give a slab based pricing so we'll say that up to 10 images per day this is the price it is uh, there will be a base fees for the month and beyond that then there will be a charge base is the incremental usage okay thank you so any other question please unmute and raise your question uh, is there a desktop version as shown in the youtube no, there is video? no desktop version because we expect that you will be using it on the field so it's a mobile version okay yashpal you can raise your question you can write your question okay so uh, we will close the session in next two minutes we will wait for we have it we have time so we will wait and <laughs> yes uh, yes atul Yes, Atul, you are not audible. Write your question. Atul, you can write your question. You are not audible. i request one more time all the participants to raise your questions or we will close in one minute yes is this app is useful across india or specific areas yeah it's a mobile app it can be used across india or might be it can use a, uh, like outside india as well or there are some <laughs> yeah it is being used outside india as well we're doing some work in indonesia we're doing some work in the us uh yeah uh, connectivity is a challenge so if you don't have uh, right connectivity in the area then it basically takes a huge amount of time for the the image to be uploaded and then it getting it processed and then getting it back uh, it's got nothing to do with rural versus urban we have had great network in some rural areas and really bad network in some of the urban areas as long as you have decent uh, network it's all good. Uh, so ram like how is there any kind of uh, is are you working on something to improve the images uh, with the with the use of the uh, camera which is have less than 12 megapixel are you currently working right on now, those no what we have seen is in most of the cases uh, you know currently uh, people do have 12 megapixel you know in fact typically we see 15 megapixel 20 megapixel kind of cameras so we are not really doing any r&d on uh, lower configuration cameras uh, we are doing some r&d on can we have offline model uh, but that's also taking some time uh, like what is what kind of offline model like uh, so basically without... have the app with uh, with the functionality of processing it on the phone itself without having to send it to the cloud so we're trying to figure that out uh, but as of now we don't have any other questions or i will close
Yeah, hi Rama. This is Saravan. I have another one question. Uh, yes, sir. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah actually, please. suppose if, if I am, uh, you know, switching. Uh, I mean, if I am shifting another mobile, so can I use the same app uh, for uh, with the same license, or should I go for uh, the uh, new one license? You can use I'm the same. License. License. You, can, you can install it again and uh, get started. Continue using. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thanks. So thank you very much, Ram. Uh, if anybody is having another questions, you can directly connect to the Ram with his uh, over his mobile. He has already provided his mobile number and he has already shared his email ID as well. So you can uh, connect and raise your questions. Uh, so. Uh, so just on the closing, I am closing this session. So uh, Intello uses artificial intelligence and provides quality grading solutions for fruits and vegetables. Currently, it is covering more than 50 commodities and still it continues to explore the other commodities as well. So that this mobile app, uh, which named as Intello Track, uh, solves the issues related to fair pricing, lack of transparency across supply chain, high cost of resources, lack of customer satisfaction and food losses, etc. Using this technology certain, certainly increases the customer satisfaction and then more or so it increases the profitability and value maximization uh, for an organization. And the reports generated by Intello Track mobile app helps in getting the fair trade off between uh, of prices between uh, uh, buyers and sellers. And you can get the reports within a minute or within a two minutes at maximum if the connectivity is not a problem. So this mobile app can be used at by farmers at Mondays, warehouse uh, wholesalers, food retailers, warehouse companies and others. So this technology is easy to use and install and instantly uh, like you can easily inst uh, install and you can use instantly at your uh, at your um, at any point of time with the use of the mobile and it uses 12 megapixel camera to use this kind of technology. And so th uh, I would like to thank uh, Ramakrishnan once again. Uh, your presentation provided us with deep insights uh, and many thanks for sharing your invaluable experience in agriculture technology. Participants really got benefited from your talk. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to thank everyone for sparing uh, their valuable time with us. And I request all the uh, people to uh, exit the session. Thank you, Ram. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.